What I'm about to share with you now is something you may find a little different, certainly unusual from the normal forms of teaching which you have experienced. And I know that you're going to like it. One thing which has concerned me in seeing art tuition or art instruction through the world has been the, the unfortunate means by which a teacher will limit you as an artist to being more or less a factory worker. In other words, uh, you are placed in a position where you simply copy what the artist will show you and you become a mimic. It denies who and what you are as a creative being. And one of the purposes of these Keylock videos is to provide for you the means by which we can unlock that creativity from within you and give you the experience of having the energy flow through you as a creative being and to receive the rewards for that. And it really isn't that difficult. It may sound difficult to you and it may sound unusual. Let's remember at all times that you are born a natural creative instrument. These processes of what we're speaking are natural to you. My job is to simplify them for you so that it becomes second nature. Let me give you a key now to help you with that understanding. Imagine that you're actually standing in the landscape, that you're standing on grass, the grass is beneath your feet. Imagine also that there's a tree there ahead of you, just a few feet away or a few metres away. Imagine also that that landscape falls away to where a stream exists and that stream winds its way back up towards a backdrop of mountains somewhere in the distance, say five miles or a few kilometres away. You know that you can put a backpack on and walk across that grass and touch that tree and walking further and further, you know that you can put your toe if you like in that stream, you could cross that stream if it's small enough, you know that you could continue walking through that landscape up into the mountains, say half a day's walk. You have that knowledge, that is a reality which, which you relate to naturally and without getting too technical about it, it simply means that that is a three-dimensional reality. You know that you can walk into that landscape. Now the key to painting which makes it so simple is that we don't have to worry about three dimensions. You only have two dimensions. And here it comes just now. Thanks, Jeanette. This is your two-dimensional reality which is just a fancy way of saying your canvas board. And this makes it very easy for you because all you have to worry about is this two-dimensional surface right here. That great landscape that we just mentioned or whatever subject you choose, seascape, there are so many, only have to exist within the boundaries of this two-dimensional surface. And already we've narrowed down what can be an amazing and awesome thing which is the world or the landscapes within it to a two-dimensional surface. And the key to your understanding is to remember that that canvas that you are working on when you paint your pictures is entirely yours. It's yours. Whatever you choose to put on that canvas, whatever you choose to make of your painting is entirely up to you. It doesn't matter what other people might consider it should be. The choice is yours. You have full sovereignty over that two-dimensional surface, over that canvas. If in the future you find that you are concerned about how a painting might look, always remember that the only person that you need to satisfy in relation to what you're creating is you. Let's spend a moment now sharing some ideas about what elements of the landscape can, can look like in that painting. Let's imagine a tree. Let's imagine that the tree is an old gnarled tree, that its growth has occurred over decades of troubled weather and that its, its trunk and its, its limbs reflect that torturous growth through those days and nights of hot and cold and tumultuous times. Would that tree be different, for instance, from 
a stately gum tree that has grown on the edge of a rainforest that has perfect growing conditions, beautiful soil and could grow straight and true. And do you notice the way that we're speaking about these elements of the landscape, in this case a tree, do you notice that we're speaking of it in terms of its inherent nature, its, its spirit? And as artists, that's what we're grabbing hold of. And if you look at those images now on screen, you will see the way that spirit presents itself in physical form. That there is a paperbark tree. You see the paperbark itself is falling off, it's shabby, it almost has a happy-go-lucky look about it. And that's different from this one. And that there is the beautiful slender trunk of one of those gum trees we were just speaking of. And those two images there show you how different elements of the landscape reflect a different character. That character we're calling spirit because it has a special quality, a special ability for us to speak as artists to you as artists and relate to you the essential quality of what an, an element is. Let's have a look at another element of the landscape. Let's imagine that a an enormous wave is breaking out at sea. Can you imagine the build-up and that, and that inherent power in this enormous wave that then lifts itself up and crashes into the sea? Can you feel the spirit of that wave? Can you, can you in your being relate to that? Of course you can. Another element, if you like, is a perfect reflection. Where, where the surface of the water is dead calm and whatever you see into the water or upon it speaks of that calm, that serenity. It's the same stuff. That big wave that crashed is water. That gentle calm, that pond, that, that still water reflection is water. The thing that gives it life, the thing that gives it power, the thing that gives it its quality, the thing that, that, that as artists we want to be a part of is its spirit. And as an artist now, the most important thing for you to remember, the most important thing in all of your career in painting the landscape is to search and try and succeed in aligning yourself with the spirit of each of those elements of the landscape. So that when you stand in the field there with the grass at your feet, you feel and you are aware and you connect with that gentle quality of the grass, that, that, uh, that seeking um, wispy quality of the grass which is entirely different from the expanse of a meadow, same stuff, different spirit, or the stateliness of the tree, or the grandiose power and that eternal timelessness of a mountain. The ability to harness that spirit will govern your happiness, your satisfaction in your art career. It's really not difficult. When you look at the elements of the landscape, you will see that each element has it there for you at all times. A crashing wave has that energy. The little blip of that wave as it, as it finishes its, and expands itself as it goes up the shore has its own quality and its own character. And every day that you go into the landscape and seek from it the different qualities and characters of those elements, the landscape will give it to you every day.